So I'm going to go up to audit information. Audit information has one key element uh, that I want to talk about, which is status. In the middle of the page, uh, roughly you see a blue control that says audit status scheduled. Um, the status determines where this audit is going to go. Is it, does it stay on your device because it's scheduled and you're going to act on it, or are you done with it? Um, and you can be done with it in several ways. So I clicked on scheduled. The drop-down list shows scheduled, reschedule, reassign, cancel, delete, completed, closed. Um, the ones with the, the arrow in front of them, the schedule, reassign, cancel, delete, those are actions that affect this audit uh, in a way that says that I can't complete it this time. So I'm going to reschedule it for a different time. I'm going to reassign it to a different auditor. I'm going to cancel it because the homeowner said that they really don't want it. Or I'm going to delete it because uh, I don't need this audit anymore. So those are kind of intermediate actions. And then completed indicates that you've done this audit and you're done with it. And it should now get pushed into the Dropbox cloud storage and off of your device. Um, and then the closed indicates that um, an administrator has looked at it and they've approved everything and uh, that audit is truly done. So depending on your workflow, you may or may not go that far. Um, but certainly scheduled and completed are the two things that you should use in your workflow. New audits are automatically on scheduled audits that are done are completed. So let me see if I can demonstrate. Um, Rich, i got a quick question yep. for you. Sure. Let's say I've, I've completed Bill Jones' audit and I synchronize it. I don't have to fill out completed, do I? Yes. You still do. In order for the device, um, for the app, to know that you completed it, you have to tell it that it's completed. Uh, I thought Otherwise, the, the, okay. I mean, the app the app has no other way of knowing that you're whether you're still editing yet or doing something else with it. Okay. You know, you, you've entered out, you've entered the information, but you rarely actually fill out every field because there's always fields that aren't appropriate for the particular house that you're in. Okay. Um, so there will always be, almost always be a, a blank field somewhere, just because it wasn't appropriate. Okay. So from a workflow standpoint you need to de define that this particular audit is completed. And, and that, that will do a couple things. So here's my list of audits again. And at the top, you'll see the Oak Pasture Lane and Reeves Court, which are my two samples. And at the very bottom of the list, you'll see one Davis Circle that is completed. And, it's, and the reason I show that is because the completed ones get moved to the bottom of the list so that they're off of your line of sight of actions that you need to do as an auditor. Um, so I'm going to show that but in the Oak Pasture Lane one by going to Oak Pasture Lane. So I clicked on it. And I'm going to go to Audit Information. And I'm going to change it from Scheduled to Completed. And then Save that. So I went in the upper left, Save. And now I'm going to go back home to the Audits list. And you'll see that it's no longer at the top of the list. It got moved to the bottom, where it now says uh, 4911 Oak Pasture Lane is completed. So that's step number one of uh, the workflow, because that then leaves the top of your list available for the next scheduled audit. Um, if you do something else, like you cancel, so I'm going to go on this uh, Reeves Court one. Again, go to Audit Information. I click on audit information and change it from scheduled to uh, up cancel because the homeowner said that they're moving. So I save that, go back home to the audits list, and now again it's off the top of the list. It got moved to the bottom where it's in red and it says it's cancel. So from a workflow standpoint, that simply migrates the audits from the top of the list where you're supposed to be acting on the next one to the bottom of the list where they're going to get taken off of your mobile device, your iPad, and moved into Dropbox. And once they're marked completed, 
they get moved into uh, the, drop, the Dropbox folder called Completed Audits. Uh, which then the administrators can look at to either generate reports off of or uh, you know, follow how many audits have been done or, or uh, whatever they need to do from the analysis standpoint. Rich, when, yes. let's say this current list that you've got shown here, if you were to synchronize it at the end of the day, those bottom three audits, they would fall off the auditor's page. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Uh, as I had said in the early slide, uh, what you should normally do is to synchronize at least once a day. Um, in the case, and I don't know what all of your workflows are going to be, but in the case of an administrator uh, setting up audits for um, the auditors, um, there is a way for the administrator to actually um, set those up in Dropbox so that when you synchronize, you'll pick those up. Um, in in the case of some of you auditors, I'm sure that you schedule your own, in which case uh, you're just going to be creating the audits on your device and there's no one else interacting with you. Um, so it depends on which organization and how that's going to be done. But it, the, the app can handle either one of those. Uh, so I'm going to come in here and do synchronize. Um, and that's what you would normally do at the end of the day. And what it will do is, I'm going to close this out yet, these, in this particular case, these three audits at the end of the list will disappear because the, you are done with those. You've either canceled them or you've completed them. Everything else will get pushed to your active folder on Dropbox and acts as a backup for you. So I'm going to do synchronize. And synchronize actually goes through a number of different steps. And if you have lots of pictures, or uh, lots of audits, it will take quite a while to do because you just got lots of data to move. Um, in this particular case, uh, it's doing step three of five, as you see in the, in the center um, message box. And it's sending two audits. Uh, and that step is moving them to completed audits. So it says step three of five, completed audits, sending one of two audits. And so it's actually sending those audits to a folder called completed audits. And this will go through several steps um, where it moves stuff to completed folders, to pending folder, to active folders. And now it's moving two of two. It's not real fast because one of the completed ones had, uh, I don't remember now what it was, 15 pictures, I think it was. So now it's moving one audit to the pending audits folder, and that's the canceled audit. And then it will move all the remainder of the audit to the active folder. So there's 14 additional. And at the end of this process, what you end up with is a list of audits that you still have to act on. And the ones that you're done with get pushed out. You don't have to, as auditors, you don't have to think about them anymore. That now becomes the responsibility of the program administrator. So it's going through now, it's sending 2 of 14, you know, it'll, 3 of 14, it'll go through this process. While, while it's running but, through this process, uh, I got a question. It might be a little sure. lengthy, but no, no problem. we've got a program administrator back in the office, and the uh, techs are out in the field doing their uh, audits and assessments and whatever. They've right. got the iPad out in the field. Right. Will the program administrator be able to see and manipulate the active um, audits on the in the Dropbox uh, from the office and add new if there are phone calls going on, and then just synchronize at the end of the day, and we, they're both seeing the same thing. Um, yes and no. Uh, so adding need, additional. Let me just jump in and make one point there. I think that um, Rob is thinking that he's going to be an administrator on this. And, and so I just want to clarify, Rob, that I'm going to be the administrator. So it's not that you're going to be administrating from your desktop while someone has the iPad out in the field. Whoever has the iPad out in the field is, is, is you know, your representative. So, so I guess the real question is, that Rob is asking, if, if, if the iPad is out in the field, can he be doing anything if one of his, you know, subcontractors, one of the guys who works for him is out in the field, 
can he be manipulating that data? Because he's not an administrator. That would just be me. I just wanted to clarify that. Well, I appreciate that clarification. That helped out uh, good. But still, that the, your follow-up question is, is is true too. So there's there's two pieces to it. Um, one is, uh, can you um, uh, create additional audits or schedule audits for the people in the field? And the answer is yes. You can create um, a spreadsheet that has the um, core information about where the address is and what kind of audit it is and who it's assigned to. And the synchronization process will pick that up. So you can assign one of your subs to um, two schedules for the next two days. Um, your second part of your question is whether or not you can manipulate the audits that they are working on. And the answer is um, technically you can. Uh, that is, you can go into Dropbox and you can manipulate the data. But um, you, you cannot simultaneously have two people working on the same audit and expect those results to, to match up. So okay, you yeah. really have to have one person at a time work on an audit and then pass it off to someone else. So if you need to do something with an audit, um, you, can, you can have the auditor um, give it to you, get, uh, um, push it out the Dropbox, and you can pick it up. And then you can work on it. But you can't both be working on it at the same time. Got it. I understand. So I went through and synchronized. And um, there are 14 instead of 17 audits now. And what you see are the, the two completed and one canceled audit are gone from the bottom. And the audit or the SIG process is uh, smart. And so if I sync again, uh, it will go through and check everything. And it's done. So the first time the synchronization process took quite a while because these particular audits had never been synchronized, and therefore the data did not exist on Dropbox. And my point here is that if you have 20 audits on your device, it won't take 10 minutes to synchronize every time you synchronize, because you probably won't touch all 20 audits. You will only touch one or two. And those will have to get pushed out in total. But all the others that have been pushed out before, it remembers what was pushed out and has not been added since then, and then handles that synchronization very quickly. So it's, it's not a very long process once you are in a regular workflow. This was, what I just did was actually a long process, relatively speaking, because all 17 audits needed to be addressed for the first time. And you would not normally do that. So again, you know, if I do a synchronization now, you'll see that the synchronization is going to take all of about, what, five, six seconds. So don't let that scare you as far as how long it takes to do that. Certainly, if you add four audits and 40 pictures, it'll take longer because you have 40 pictures. So that, that deals with uh, kind of the standard workflow that we recommend. Um, not that you have to do it that way. Um, the Dropbox. Uh, um, is a convenience and a backup and gives you administrators access to the completed audits in particular. Um, so that makes it very useful. Uh, so let me go back to a point on that. And I think this is partly um, between Rob and Laura uh, in the discussion there that um, they brought up. And that is that as an administrator, um, if you want to look at the audits in, in the same way that I'm showing them right now on the iPad, then you need, obviously need an iPad. The data is all there, but the data is, is simply electronic data. At, and you can bring it into a spreadsheet. You can look at it. But you won't get the full display um, and all the options that you show here. You, you'll just get the results of that data, which for most administrators is probably sufficient. <coughs> but if there's a need to go more than that, then, you, then you, the administrators need an iPad as well. Yes. Rich, I know we're um, getting close on time, but if you would show one more feature of the audit, um, the ECM checklist. OK. Um, let me grab one here that so I went to Rowan Place, and one of the items on the left-hand side toward the bottom is ECM checklist. And that's just one of the data sections. The ECM checklist is a pre-set 
list of recommendations. And in this case, there's recommendations for air sealing, attic, wall, floor, heating, cooling, hot water, venting, health and safety. 